support us here tonight. We are honored to have you visit us on this feast day of the Assumption of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary. As we celebrate this feast, we also want to celebrate the Cecily Centennial of our parish, although a bit delayed due to COVID precautions. My name is Joellen Stevelton. I have been a parishioner of St. Mary Church for 50 years. I've witnessed many changes, some more significant than others. St. Mary Church has a long history of being an integral part of the community and promoting the church's mission of evangelization. Established as a mission church by the Diocese of Columbus in 1871, just three years after the diocese itself was established, and eight years earlier than the iconic Hershey Bar was produced. St. Mary Church served the Irish immigrants that had settled in the area while building the canal system. Many of our local streets were named after those families, and we are fortunate to still have parishioners that are descendants of those original members. For over 60 years, the parish was a mission of the Columbus Diocese until the Vincentian Fathers were invited to take over its care. This suited both the Vincentians and the parish as the Vincentians needed a location for a mission house and the parish now had a much needed resident pastor. The mission house was built and included living quarters for the priests assigned to St. Mary as well as Vincentian priests traveling across the country. As the congregation grew, it was necessary to have a larger worship space. A new church with double the seating capacity was built next to the original church and the original church became the church hall. Many times the congregation was told that something couldn't be done and every time the parish came together and got it done anyway. An example of this is when several years later, that old building, the old church, that needed some significant renovations to make the building more usable as a church hall. Then Bishop Reedy was not a fan of the project, but finally relented after much persuasion by the pastor, Father Lawler. When permission was granted, the entire remodel was accomplished through the volunteer labor of parishioners. For a keg of beer and lunch prepared by the ladies of the parish, all the concrete block for two restrooms and a kitchen was laid on one Saturday by a crew of stonemasons led by parishioner Herman Schick. Our current building was built in 1977. And while it was, wasn't built with volunteer labor, it was paid off within five years through the dedicated efforts of many parishioners and our many organizations. In the 1980s, a unique garden was built on the back of the church grounds. There is a path where anyone can follow the Stations of the Cross. Families volunteered to plant and care for flowers at each station. Today, it's used by both parishioners and members of the community that are not even Catholic. Throughout the past 151 years, the parish has supported the area's immigrants, those in need, and those looking for spiritual guidance through its many organizations. Though several groups have come and gone through the years, one constant has been the Altar Rosary Society. It was originally founded in 1947 and was called the St. Mary Chapter of Diocesan Council of Catholic Women. That organization continues to this day. With a myriad of fundraising activities, including the funds raised by the Craft Club, they provide altar breads, <coughs> wine, altar cloths and linens, vestments, and flowers. They support the sick and aged through visits, cards, Christmas poinsettias, and the prayer line. They champion women's causes through donations to Birthright and through their Madonna Fund, financially supporting organizations committed to promoting life. They have supported the youth in our parish by financially supporting those attending the National Catholic Youth, youth Conference. They provide luncheons after funerals. In addition, they sponsor blood drives that during 2021 collected almost 400 pints of blood, providing life-saving products to around 1,200 people. Our men's club, formerly the Holy Name Society, has seen a resurgence in the last several years. While one of their original activities, bingo, 
has long since been abandoned. They continue to host spaghetti suppers, pancake breakfasts, and parish picnics. They provide one of the simple suppers during Lent and help the St. Vincent de Paul Society when furniture needs to be delivered to the families. Their fundraising activities support many maintenance needs of the church and church grounds. And they also support our youth by providing a college scholarship to a deserving young man or woman. In the 1970s, the St. Vincent de Paul Society was organized in the parish in keeping with our roots with the Vincentians. They have provided countless meals for the homeless, serving 150 to 160 men every fifth Thursday. St. Lawrence Haven on Ridge Street is the beneficiary of sandwiches made by the PSR students and delivered by St. Vincent de Paul members. They also collect over 50 hams along with desserts for Bethlehem on Broad Street each Christmas. Their mission also includes helping local families in need. This includes families in the Groveport Madison School District as well as families from Obetz, Canal Winchester, and the Rickenbacker neighborhoods. Help can be for utility bills, furnishings, or other needs. The, the parish supports the organization with over $6,500 in financial contributions, as well as in-kind donations. <coughs> our youth are not to be left out of the impact that our parish has on the community and the evangelization that comes with it. <coughs> Prior to COVID restrictions, they assembled sandwiches for St. Lawrence Haven. They collect toiletries in conjunction with the St. Vincent de Paul Society and assemble them in kits to be distributed to the homeless. They sponsor the mitten tree during Advent, collecting mittens, gloves, hats, and scarves for children that would otherwise go without. They collect socks and underwear for men and women that are dis distributed through JOIN. Just recently, they collected diapers for the world's largest diaper drive for Bottoms Up Diaper Bank. Also, prior to COVID restrictions, they made Christmas crafts that were given to the homebound along with the poinsettias delivered by the Altar Rosary Society. In addition to the organizational support our parish provides to the community, we also support other local efforts. Parishioners support the Groveport Food Pantry with financial contributions close to $3,000. In addition, we collect over a thousand pounds of non-perishable food for the pantry. The pa food pantry serves around 50 families experiencing food insecurity each month. We also support Groveport Madison Human Needs which helps families in the Groveport Madison School District in crisis with a variety of needs. In 2021, they helped 112 families and on average distribute about $55,000 each year in emergency assistance. While the parish at large does not provide monetary contributions, our St. Vincent de Paul Society often helps when the need exceeds the limit set by Groveport Madison human needs. St. Mary parishioners are directly involved with the Christmas Adopt-A-Family sponsored by Groveport Madison Human Needs. We provide Christmas for two of the largest families, each having five to six or even more children. They are different families each year. This provides significant support as it is very difficult to find angels to support families of this size. We also participate in the Groveport Community Vacation Bible School, collectively providing this ministry along with other churches in the community since 2010. While many of these groups are not unique to St. Mary Church, the closing of St. Mary Church would have a significant detrimental impact on the community. I am gravely concerned that closing St. Mary Church would leave a gaping hole in our community. St. John 23rd Parish already does support the needs of the Lithopolis and Canal Winchester areas. And I am afraid that adding additional communities would have a negative effect on the ability to support any of them adequately. Our parish has seen many growth spurts so that over the years we have been divided over and over again with the opening of new parishes. We are currently in a re rebuilding phase in our parish after having been divided most recently in the year 2000. The city of Groveport expects to see some population growth in the next few years, but the city of Obatz ex expects to see significant growth in the next several years with a population increase of 3,000 to 4,000 people. There is reason to believe that our parish will also grow with them. 
Of concern in reuniting the two parishes, as proposed in phase two of Real Presence, Real Future, is one of the reasons it was divided in the first place, the sheer geographical area. It would make it more difficult for many to participate in activities sponsored by the parish and possibly even to attend mass. It is also very demographically different, much more so now than it used to be. The ability to have a cohesive parish would be challenging, especially for our youth. As it stands now, we have parishioners from at least four school systems. Merging our par parish with St. John 23rd or any other parish would increase that number of school systems. Since the teen years are especially important in faith formation, there could be a negative consequence to throwing high school students together with others they only see an hour or so per week. I actually had that experience as a teenager in this parish. I longed for a group that was comfortable with each other. Lastly, with our most recent priest assignment, Father Hillary, we have become an even more determined parish. With our proximity to Rickenbacker Airport, we have always been a parish community that supports the U.S. military. Father Hillary's military chaplaincy continues this support with vital spiritual support for our country's active, reserve, and guard servicemen and women. While we miss him while he is on his military endeavors, we have united to make sure that all that should be done is done. We are truly a parish where the people are the church. Your Excellency, we opened with the Buckeye fight song to signify that we are here to fight for the longevity of our parish. We ask that you consider all that we have to offer as you make the difficult decisions.